Hey everybody, it is Dak here from the Ed Boys, and today's video is going to be about getting rich with smithing. I started to make a couple of poor to rich money making guides recently with some simple goals in mind, just teaching you how to make a lot of GP, even if you don't have that much cash to work with currently. The last two guides like this were about Vorkath though, so we're going to change it up today and go with some scaling money making. Scaling money making methods don't usually max out at quite the profit of high level combat, but you can start making money with this guide on the very first day of your account, and eventually you can get over 1 mil GP an hour on a very easy grind. If these guides have been helpful for your money making gains be sure to click that like button and subscribe for more content thank you very much for all the support lately everybody this guy is going to start out with the blast furnace in fact it is going to mostly be blast furnace for a while if you only care about maximum gp that you can make an hour while smithing then you really only ever want to do the blast furnace so the first chunk of the video is going to focus on that doing the exact same thing over and over again does get pretty repetitive so i find being able to change up the pace occasionally does help with motivation for money making so after the blast furnace we'll talk about other smithing options that can help with money making first of all we have the giants foundry a smithing activity recently added to osrs that gives us something new to do with our bars we will then go over the beauty of cannonballs including the double ammo mold and we'll talk about anvil smithing and how that has been sped up a little bit thanks to the smith's uniform another reward from the giants foundry finally i'll be breaking everything in the video down into more of a step-by-step -step plan for getting rich with smithing the goal of this video is to break down money making from smithing it is not a guide on how to do blast furnace or how to do giants foundry as i already have guides for that and those are linked in the description the best smithing moneymaker in the game is still the Blast Furnace. Making room bars of the Blast Furnace can make over 1 mil an hour, but you don't need to get to 85 smithing to start making good money at the Blast Furnace by any means. The reason Blast Furnace is a good moneymaker is because you can make a lot of bars in a short amount of time, and bars that normally require coal to make now require half as much coal. So to make a rune bar, you only need 4 coal instead of 8. You can profit with iron bars at the blast furnace, but the first bar you want to get to is steel bars, which requires 30 smithing. If you haven't gotten 30 smithing yet, you want to do the knight's sword quest. Completing the knight's sword is going to jump you from 1 to 29, and for the last bit of XP, you could buy 26 iron bars and a hammer, head to the nearest anvil, and just make some iron items. Technically, it doesn't matter which iron item, the XP that you get is just based off of those iron bars. Once you're 30 smithing, you now only need iron ore and coal to start making some steel bars. You'll also need to buy some stamina potions, but before we dive deeper into the blast furnace, there's a couple things you can do that's going to get you some starting ore and in general it's going to massively increase the gp an hour you can make at the blast furnace first of all the ice gloves these are obtainable by killing the ice queen if you have protect from melee then it is super easy to get the ice gloves they're very convenient for the grind but they're also not required as you could use a bucket of water instead but these will speed up how many bars you're making per hour the big item that you want to grind out before doing a lot of blast furnace is the coal bag which is obtained from the mother load mine i know that this is a get rich with smithing guide and now i'm telling you to go mine before we really get into any smithing thing but the coal bag is basically going to double your blast furnace gain so it is very worth it you do need 30 mining to get started at the mother load mine and right at 30 mining it's going to take about 10 hours of mother load to get the coal bag if 10 hours sounds daunting to you then you need to remember that there's no get rich quick scheme unless maybe you got like insanely lucky on elijah and sigil even then it takes many hours of progress to your account to get to the corporal beast which drops that thing so if you want to get rich on osrs generally you're going to need to grind 10 hours at mother load mine is also going to bank a lot of coal gold Gold ore and even mithril ore which can all be used at the blast furnace if your goal is just making money like purely making cash i do suggest that you sell all of the gold and myth that you get from motherload mine and just buy some coal and iron ore remember you only need one coal per iron ore at the blast furnace to make a steel bar this is not meant to be a blast furnace guide if you have absolutely no idea how to do the blast furnace i suggest you check out my old blast furnace guide which is linked in the description that video will actually teach you all the ins and outs of how to do the blast furnace now that you have 30 plus smithing and a coal bag and some coal, you're just going to need to buy some iron ore and some stamina potions. You should use 7 to 8 stamina potions per hour. It's also worth noting that the Graceful outfit will help you out a lot with run energy. Graceful does take a long time to get. It takes even longer than the coal bag, so I'm not going to tell you that you have to go do this before you get started at Blast Furnace. Anytime that you're getting tired of Blast Furnace and you want to change up your grind a little bit though, I would go run some rooftop laps and start working on that outfit if you don't have it done already. Be careful not to spend all of your coins on supplies as you're going to have to spend some money at the blast furnace up to 84k gp an hour so at this point you could only do blast furnace for all of your hours and you will get rich even though there are other smithing money making methods i'm going to break down a few level milestones and the xp and gp around those milestones at the blast furnace all the way to room bars but i am not telling you that you have to go directly to 85 smithing at the blast furnace as you're going to see when we get to other sections of this money making guide you could switch it up 
You have sped up your gain significantly by getting the coal bag, but you're still not going to be getting a max pace out the gate. If you're below level 60 smithing, you have to pay the foreman 2.5k every 10 minutes to use the furnace. It's not a lot of money, but it is a little bit annoying and it's going to slow you down slightly. As with anything else, practice makes perfect, so speed running the blast furnace out the gate really isn't as easy. We're going to say 2 to 3k steel bars an hour at 30 smithing. Currently, the profit per steel bar is down a little bit compared to normal. Sometimes you can get over a mil GP an hour making steel bars. At the moment, getting up to 200 coins per steel bar is stretching out the profit a bit. Prices do fluctuate, so it's always worth checking the price at the time of the video, but you could push up to 600k GP an hour from these steel bars. This is not 100% profit since you're also using some stamina sips and you have to pay the dwarves, but you can still manage over 500k GP an hour at low levels, and this would make for 35k to 42k smithing XP an hour. From 30 to 50 smithing is 87,970 XP. That's 5,027 steel bars, which would take you an hour and 45 minutes, close to two hours of steel bars, and you should profit about one mil. You can move on to mithril bars right at 50. I would actually go to Giant's Foundry first, which we'll be moving on to once we're done spitting out some blast furnace numbers. Mithril bars are similar profit to steel bars, but a little bit better XP an hour. From 50 to 60 smithing is going to require 172k smithing XP, which would be 5,747 myth bars. This should take about two hours even having to pay the foreman if you're not getting max bars per hour then you do need to focus on shaving off seconds for each run you take like 180 trips to the bank and to the conveyor belt each hour so just shaving off one second from each of those trips does go a long way don't forget to use your escape key to close your bank so that you don't have to hover over the x you can also hold down your space bar as you collect your bars so that you get them in one tick and it's also a good idea to turn all of your stamina potions into one dose potions at the grand exchange and then whenever you need a stamina sip you just take one dose and don't even bother re banking it. Little things like this really can speed up your blast furnace gains. For the 5,747 myth bars, that should take you about two hours, and you'll profit right about two mil, maybe just under. From 60 to 70 smithing, you can stick with mithril bars, but now you don't have to pay the foreman anymore, which is going to speed things up a little bit. Plus, you've done a good chunk of blast furnace overall at this point, so I am assuming that you're getting the process down a little bit. You're missing far less ticks, which means overall you're getting closer to the maximum bars per hour. For these levels, you need 463,885 smithing XP. That is 15,463 bars for those 10 levels. You can get up to 3,500 mithril bars an hour, which would take you four and a half hours to get these bars done. Uh, 15.4k bars should make you about 5 mil profit, so if you could manage 5 mil profit in 4.5 hours, you're actually peaking at a little bit over the 1 mil profit per hour mark at this point. Uh, that is pushing it with mithril bar prices. This does depend on exactly the price of coal and mithril ore at the time you do this, of course. From 70 to 85 smithing, you can switch to adamant bars. This is slightly less XP an hour than myth bars, plus adamant bars fluctuate a lot harder in price, so it's always worth checking those prices. You can make up to 2,500 addy bars an hour, pushing more like 2,700 if you're being close to tick perfect. For 70 to 85 smithing, you need 2.5 million XP. This is going to require 67,226 adamant bars. Yes, that is a lot of bars, by the way. Levels do start to take a lot of XP once you get over 80 in any level. Just wait until you see 90s in smithing. It takes a ridiculous amount of bars, but you don't have to do all these bars for money making. Like, just uh, once you've made enough money and you want to do something else, you could always move on. 67k addy bars is not only 67k addy ore, but just about 200,000 coal would be required. That is a ridiculous amount of coal to try to buy at once. In fact, you can only buy 13,000 coal on the GE every four hours. So unless you have a friend to help you buy, you are going to need to put in a large coal off offer overnight if you want to do all these blast furnace hours in a row or at least a lot of them in a row you're not going to do all of these in one sitting uh, you don't have to be able to buy all 200,000 coal or 67k addy ore at once even if you could only buy like one to 5k addy bars worth of supplies without all the cash that you have you could then go make those bars, go back to the GE, sell all the bars, get a little bit more in supplies. This does add time. The more money that you have, the more supplies you can stock up, then the less trips to the GE. That all being said, the 67,000 Addy bars should take 30 to 33 hours of the blast furnace, or as few as 27 hours if you're max pace the whole time. In those 30 hours or so, you're going to make 31 to 32 mil GP, which is actually getting up there for a potentially fresh account. If you're not on a new account necessarily, going from 30 to 85 smithing, we still made 40 mil which is pretty solid. We're also talking about 40 plus hours, rather 50 plus hours if you include the mother load mine. That could be done in like a week if this was your full-time job, but if you have an actual job or even friends, then maybe doing a full week of blast furnace could be rough. That's why we have other methods in this guide to change things up a little bit. And even if it took you a couple of weeks into a brand new account, having 40 mil cash is a pretty solid start. I feel like the average account doesn't necessarily have a 40 mil cash stack only two weeks in. 
Now at 85 smithing, you can start making rune bars for the rest of time, really. The more rune bars that you make, the more rich you're going to get. From 85 to 99 smithing is 9.7 mil XP. It would be almost 200,000 rune bars. You can make anywhere from 1.3 to 1.6 mil profit per hour from rune bars. I'm not going to break down exactly the, the time and effort required from 85 to 99 smithing because you could even go past 99 smithing for getting cash. This isn't a 1 in 99 guide, in other words. Like, we've gotten to the max point here, rune bars. They can make... Up to a mil and a half an hour is pretty solid for skilling money making. Again, you don't have to go to 99 smithing, but you don't have to stop there. It's up to you, of course. The more hours of room bars that you're willing to do, the more cash you are going to make. We've had a lot of Blast Furnace talk so far. Technically, to make the most money with smithing, you should only do Blast Furnace if that's what you're willing to do. Sometimes it is more motivating to change up the method and work on something else for a little bit. So let's go check out the other smithing options. The Giant's Foundry is meant for XP a little bit more than it's meant for GP, but you will profit a little bit at like lower tier bars. Plus a few of the rewards from Giant's Foundry can be used to make money elsewhere. I suggest by 50 smithing, you make your way over to the Giant's Foundry for these rewards. At 50 smithing, you can use steel and mithril bars to make slight profit and you can make some solid XP gains. In fact, it's not even a bad idea to hang out here all the way until rune bars if you really do enjoy the foundry. Rune bars are the best money maker that you can make at the blast furnace, so it's smart to like get there ASAP and then in any of the hours you saved getting there, you can now spend those hours on rune bars. Steel bars are good enough at the blast furnace though. You don't have to feel like you have to rush rune bars that bad to be fair. Using 14 steel and mithril bars per sword at Giant's Foundry, you can manage 15 swords an hour at like a maximum pace. That's really cruising. Maybe 13 to 15 is a more reasonable range. This would be 182 to 210 steel and mithril bars an hour, which is really not that many bars per hour. You're going to be making thousands of steel bars at the Blast Furnace, so if you just keep some of the bars that you made on the way to 50, maybe sell off a chunk of the other bars to buy some mithril bars and then head to the Giant's Foundry, you'll have plenty of bars for this. The amount of time that you want to spend on the Foundry is up to you and exactly how many bars that you're going to use here also depends on if you're not messing the quality up at all and as you unlock molds from the store you get even more quality per sword so it's kind of hard to say exactly how many bars you're going to use here let's go ahead and break down how much time you should spend here though in my opinion i suggest getting the smith uniform and the double cannonball mold since i will be bringing up both of those if you don't want to spend that much time here you should at least knock out 60 smithing so that you don't have to pay the foreman at the blast furnace anymore though 50 to 60 smithing is going to be 172k xp with myth and steel bars this should take 20 swords it'll take even more if you're messing up the swords at all but it'll take even less bars if you already have some of the molds from the store 20 swords would be 280 steel bars and mithril bars and it should take you about an hour and 30 minutes at the giant's foundry so if you're getting 9k xp per sword that means you're averaging 100 quality per sword at 20 swords that would be 2,000 points gained going from 50 to 60 smithing which you could spend on that double cannonball mold i would personally spend your first chunk of points on like the molds that can be used here at giant's foundry here's a list of all the molds that you can use by 60 smithing the corrupted tip is actually not needed so you can skip this one which leaves 2200 points worth of molds to buy so another three or four swords after 60 smithing and you should be able to purchase all of the molds that you can use at 61 smithing there's one more mold at 350 points and then all the molds past that require at least 69 smithing so you could focus on the smith's uniform at this point but anytime that you get that level required to buy a new mold you should probably go buy that first so getting to about 61 smithing and knocking out all the early molds requires about 25 swords, which is still under two hours from 50 smithing and 350 of each steel and mithril bar. From there, you can go for both the smith's uniform and the cannonball mold. To get all of that would cost you 17,000 points. At 100 points per sword, that's 170 swords. This is going to take you 11 to 13 hours, depending on your pace. And you would also gain 1.5 million smithing XP, getting you up to 79 smithing, which should actually unlock a few of those nice molds too. The smith's uniform and the cannonball molds wouldn't be used at the blast furnace, but jumping to 79 smithing would skip right to adamant bars, and you're pretty close to working on room bars at that point. Once you've gotten tired of the giant's foundry, you want to go back to the blast furnace to make as much money as possible, but now that you have a few upgrades for other money-making methods, you can take another break from blast furnace down the road. So the rewards that you got from Giant's Foundry have upgraded some other money makers, and it gives you a place to go use the bars that you've already made at the Blast Furnace. First, we have Cannonballs. You can make a little over 2, 
2,000 cannonballs an hour, which would require 500 steel bars. But if you have that double ammo mold, then you can get up to 1,000 steel bars done per hour, which is 4,000 cannonballs. Currently, you make just over 250 coins per steel bar, turning it into cannonballs, so that would be just over 250k GP an hour while making cannonballs at the moment. Cannonballs are not meant to be more money than the Blast Furnace by any means, but it is very AFK, and it gives you a pretty good opportunity for some multitasking. Another reward that you get from the Giant's Foundry is the Smith's Uniform. Wearing the full uniform will guarantee that you make items at an anvil one tick faster than normal. Now one tick doesn't seem like much, but increasing the speed of a moneymaker that already existed is kind of nice. This is a nice place to take your room bars from the Blast Furnace to change things up. The closest anvil to a bank is in Prifendos, but if you haven't done Song of the Elves, then you could just use the anvil south of the West Varrock Bank, as it is still very close. The only rune items that make a profit are the three bar rune items, which is rune plate legs, rune plate skirts, and rune two hands which means you do need 99 smithing to actually profit off of these rune bar items those items are all just about alk price though so if you're struggling to sell off a lot of like rune blade skirts you can just alk them instead which also gets you some magic xp but of course it's going to cost you slightly more thanks to the nature room so you can alk three bar rune items for 38.4k the three bar rune items plus a nature rune costs about 37.5k so you're profiting just under 1k per item those rune bars cost you even less if you made them yourself but that doesn't necessarily make the process worth any extra cash, you could just sell those room bars. I do a video called Breaking Down Money Makers that discusses this a little bit more in depth. You could make over a thousand rune skirts an hour with the Smith's uniform, which would be up to 350k GP an hour if you manage to sell those rune skirts. If you do have to alk them, it is going to be less GP an hour because it'll take longer, but you're also getting more XP and magic. Again, it's not as much as just making rune bars of the blast furnace, but it's a lot less click intensive and it's something to change up the pace of things. You can also profit with other bars at an anvil by making them into dart tips. One bar makes 10 dart tips and you only do one bar at a time, so it is a lot more AFK, but it barely profits. In fact, sometimes it won't profit. You want to check the price of dart tips before you pull the trigger on that. The best way to make money at the anvil is with three bar rune items and then selling them on the grain exchange. With all the information we have here, let's go over a little bit more of a step-by-step -step plan from one smithing for getting rich with smithing. At level 1 smithing, knock out the knight's sword quest, jumping to 29 smithing, and from there, go buy 26 iron bars and smith them into whatever you want. Before getting to the blast furnace, you want to get the ice gloves and the coal bag. The ice gloves aren't as big of an upgrade, but they are very easy to get, and the coal bag is going to take like 10 hours of mother load mine, but it will double your profits to the blast furnace, and you'll get some starting ores for the furnace. Sell off any gold and mithril ore that you got from Motherload Mine and buy some stamina potions and iron ore. Leave yourself a little bit of cash for the dwarves, pump out steel bars until 50 smithing. You can continue the ladder of progression to the blast furnace from here. You can make myth bars at 50, adamant bars at 70, and then rune bars at 85 smithing. Making rune bars is going to be the best GP an hour you get from smithing, so if you only care about getting rich and you've been enjoying the blast furnace, just stick to the blast furnace. If you want to change things up, move on to the giant's foundry at 50 smithing. You can pump out 50 to 60 so that when you return to the blast furnace you no longer have to pay the foreman and one reward that you can get from the giant's foundry is the double cannonball mold you could take any steel bars that you've made at the blast furnace take the double mold to a regular furnace like in edgeville and make some really nice afk profit if you've been making rune bars rather than steel bars then there's another giant's foundry reward for you it's the smith's uniform it'll speed up anvil smithing so you can take this outfit and your rune bars to the varrock anvil or the Prifendos anvil if you've done song of the elves and you can make some rune plate skirts to get a little bit of extra profit out of your rune bars you would make more money if you just sold your rune bars bought more rune ore and made more bars but if you are tired of the blast furnace at all there are other options for continuing to make money that is just about it just repeat all these methods as much as you're willing to do it blast furnace is your best cash if you're making a lot of steel bars you could spend some time on cannonballs when you're bored and if you're making a lot of room bars and you want to change it up you do have anvil smithing as with any money maker if you want to get rich on osrs you are gonna to have to put a lot of time in smithing does not max out at a wild profit like vorkath does but you can still get a lot of money from smithing training and it can be done very early in an account's progress also, don't forget that you don't have to just pick one moneymaker that works and run with it for the rest of time. I've shown a couple of examples in this video with cannonballs and anvil smithing about like changing up the pace of things, but there's also non-smithing moneymakers that you could spend your time on, of course. The most important factor of moneymaking is how motivated you are to continue to do the moneymaking method. If you can make a ton of money per hour, but you're not willing to do it, you're not going to make any money. And for that reason, I'll continue to make more poor to rich moneymaking guides so that there are a variety of methods for you. I believe that's everything that I wanted to say in this Get Rich with 
the smithing money making guide everybody if you've been enjoying the video or you just got some useful information out of it be sure to like and subscribe for more content also if you're looking for even more porter rich money making guides be sure to let me know in the comments section below thank you for watching this guide everyone if you still have any questions let me know in the comments i do stream on twitch which should be linked on the screen and in the description i also have a discord and i'm on twitter which should both be linked in the description thanks again for watching everyone and best of luck with your money making grind